Well, that was one humdinger of an open letter that was published the other day by members of the media party. It's a joint letter, actually, signed by 48, count them, 48 media organizations and associations. It was sent to the prime minister, cabinet ministers, and other political leaders. And the letter, quote, demands action on the growing harassment and abuse of journalists in Canada, end quote. Oh my, it would seem that the media watchdogs, who now exist as lapdogs, are in a most disagreeable mood, despite being very well taken care of by their kennel master, Justin Trudeau. Then again, I suppose even the tiniest and most domesticated chihuahua might yelp out a bark or two if it's pissed off, right? So how about we dissect this missive, shall we? It begins, quote, dear Prime Minister Trudeau, end quote. Well, of course Justin is dear. He's the media party's sugar daddy. More than a billion annually for the vastly unwatched CBC, more than 600 million annually to the rest of the mainstream media because these outlets can't seem to sell subscriptions and advertising in sufficient volume to stay afloat. And gee, I wonder why that would be. Needless to say, sucking from the government teat is immoral and unethical. Simply put, how can you objectively cover the latest scandals erupting in this liberal government when you are also receiving payola from Prime Minister Blackface himself? But I digress because the media mutts are barking mad. Apparently, the practice of journalism these days is getting increasingly dangerous. Oh, oh you don't say. And apparently, Master Trudeau is not protecting his minions as he should be in these uber-violent times. Yes, first they want bucks, now they want bodyguards and even a dash of Big Brother to, you know, monitor things. You see, not a week goes by in Canada in which a journalist isn't slaughtered in the course of duty. Okay, not slaughtered. Uh, would you believe beaten to a pulp? Um, how about slapped on the wrist? Um, harsh language, anyone? Yes, it's F-bombs and mean tweets that the sluggos and the MSM are enduring. And this will not be tolerated. These are special people, after all, folks. Anyway, the letter goes on to state, quote, We are writing in relation to the increasing and alarming online hate and harassment targeting journalists and journalism as a profession. This is a global problem which threatens not only the safety and well-being of journalists, but the proper functioning of democracy itself. Many countries are now working on plans to fight back. We are calling on Canadian police and policymakers to do the same. For the most part, these attacks are aimed at racialized and female journalists who are experiencing an increasing number of targeted vile threats of violence, end quote. Is that true, by the way? Racialized and female journalists are receiving the brunt of this harassment? Or is this yet more critical race theory being jammed down our throats? The letter goes on, quote, we are asking police forces to take several immediate steps to address the current incidents and to work with our organizations to combat abuse of journalists and all victims of online hate and harassment, end quote. So if you read between the lines here, folks, these journalists and journalism organizations are calling for censorship. They are calling for a further enhancement of what is already a society resembling a police state. That's an odd thing for those in the press to clamor for, wouldn't you say? Oh, and be careful what you wish for, guys. The Trudeau liberals are already hell-bent on censoring the internet as is. Methinks some of the signatories to this letter might not like the final result. The open letter drones on. Quote, First, many of the threatening emails use similar language, the language commonly used by domestic extremist groups. End quote. Whoa, 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 stop the clock. Who are the so-called domestic extremist groups? They are not identified in the open letter. 
What a reckless use of language by these scribes. You see, the way journalism works is that you make a statement and then you back it up with a fact or an example. So again, who are these domestic terrorist groups? I think they are referring to the freedom convoys of the last several months. Yeah, that was one hell of a terrorist group on Wellington Street in Ottawa, wasn't it? Especially if one believes bouncy castles and hot tubs are weapons of mass destruction. Oh, by the way, isn't it interesting how the media loathes phantom domestic extremist groups, but they really kind of dig international terrorist groups. Case in point, our homegrown al-Qaeda terrorist, Omar Khadr, he killed an American ally and partially blinded another. So we locked them up for life, of course. Oh, no, we didn't do that. Justin Trudeau, who never met a jihadi he didn't adore, cut little Omar a check for $10.5 because this murderer had his feelings hurt? Please find me the doofus who coined the phrase, crime does not pay. The online letter at points gets comical, folks. Check out this line, quote, On several occasions, journalists from our organizations have experienced difficulty reporting incidents of harassment to police waiting hours on the phone, and in some cases being treated insensitively or dismissively by officers, end quote. Oh my God in heaven, these reporters were put on hold and they were treated in an insensitive fashion? Gee, it really is a war zone out there for these scribes, I'll tell you. Then come the demands, which can be summed up as follows. They essentially want a thought police force one that will take action on, quote, journalists who have become targets of hate and harassment, end quote. And this will, quote, protect journalists and thus democracy, <laughs> end quote. Oh, please, guys, get over yourselves. Taxpayer-funded journalists receiving nasty tweets is a akin to an attack on democracy? Surely an insurrection. And besides, have these sluggos ever heard the rhyme that begins with sticks and stones may break my bones? Aside from the usual suspects, such as the CBC and Torstar, the latter being more concerned with running its online casino other than publishing newspapers these days, well, there are notable signatories to this open letter. For example, there's Canada Land, which, despite its moniker, is not a theme park, although it can resemble a house of horrors at times, and the Canadian Association of Black Journalists. Now, I didn't even know this organization existed, and I wonder what their position is on their benefactor's habit of, you know, donning blackface. And, of course, there's the media party's very own beloved union, Unifor, a.k.a. The Resistance. Say, guys, how's... Unifor's former president, Jerry Diaz, doing. You remember Jerry, don't you, folks? He allegedly accepted $50,000 from a supplier of COVID-19 rapid test kits. And then he promptly put himself into a mental hospital because he's not a fraudster, you see. He's sick or the devil made him do it or, or something like that. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix and in addition to my weekly sorry my nightly show you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News so you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks I think it's worth it and even if you're not quite sure do it anyways because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe thanks <laughs>